Hi, in this video, we'll be learning how to use some of the R functions for doing um, regression analysis. We'll be doing just simple regression analysis in this video. So let's start by loading our dependencies. Uh, most of these we're pretty familiar with. Broom is a new one that's used for um, turning output from R into a tidy type format. Prediction is a useful R package for uh, predicting, given a model predicting, and then also data set predicting uh, what the output of that data set would be. Uh, ggrepel is also useful for labeling uh, points in a plot and not having overlap. So let's go ahead and load those up now. And then check out the lm function, and this is a workhorse in R for doing regression analysis. And you can see that the first argument is a formula. It also takes data and has a number of other different um, arguments to it. But the, for this video, we're going to mostly focus on formula and data. And if you remember, a formula is in the form of y tilde and then x, your, and your predictors are your x values. Your outcome is y. Okay. We'll be using the serial data set. If you remember, this is what it looks like. Let's get a little more real estate here. Look at it. And we're going to start with the hypothesis. And we're going to look at the relationship between uh, fiber and also between potassium. And the hypothesis, the null is that there is not a re linear relationship between potassium and fiber. And the alternative is that there is a linear relationship between potassium and fiber. And we should start out with um, viewing this data set, right? Or these this relationship between variables. In a correlation, usually you want some sort of scatter plot, um, maybe a hex bin as well. So we're going to use GeomJitter just to add a little bit of random noise to this plot. Uh, and you can see this looks fairly linear, maybe a slight curve to it. Looks like it might curve around a little bit like that. We can also throw onto it a geom smooth, and we can say method equals lm, and that means put a line on it, best fit line, ordinary least squares. And we say fill equals na, and that uh, keeps from putting the confidence intervals. But we can see the overall, yeah, it looks fairly linear. Uh, the variance around that line looks pretty, pretty evenly distributed. Let's go ahead and remove the lm method, and it defaults to a lowest. We can see, yeah, there is a slight curve to it that maybe would fit a little bit better. So our, already we know we might be violating one of the assumptions of regression, which is that the relationship between x and y is linear. So let's start by building a linear model. So these are the equations for uh, matrix algebra for regression. So y is what we're trying to predict the outcome. So in this case, we're trying to predict fiber. So we have a, a vector of fiber outputs um, for each serial, y1 through yn. Uh, so maybe this is raisin bran, this is lucky charm, something along those lines. Next, we have the x term equals x. This is called your design matrix, and it starts with a uh, column of ones. This is a constant, uh, and that's um, to give you the um, the um, y-intercept. And then you have your x terms here. For every single uh, predictor that you're putting into the model, you will have a column. In this case, because it's simple regression, we're just going to have one column of x's. And this is your potassium. So potassium is predicting into the model, and fiber is what the outcome is. And then you have your, your betas, your regression coefficients, your weights, sometimes they're called. And beta 1 and beta 0, and beta 0 is... Um, your y-intercept. Uh, beta 1 is the weight for the regression coefficient, so that's what the potassium is being weighted by. And then you have plus some sort of error, so your model is not going to, likely is not going to perfectly predict um, fiber. So we should be able to figure out what those beta weights are, and then anytime you put an x into the model, that is some sort of potassium, it gets um, multiplied by your beta, and you have your y-intercept as well, and you should have the line for an equation now, so you have your slope, and you have your y-intercept, you should be able to predict then with those inputs uh, what your output of fiber will be. So how, what's the matrix notation then for uh, betas? Well, here it is. And uh, you don't particularly have to know this. Uh, it may be interesting for you to, to look at it, though. But we can write this uh, matrix notation. It's pretty efficient to do so in R. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go ahead and create that y column right there. Those are your uh, fiber. That's what we're trying to predict. And we're going to make that design matrix. So I'm going to take your x's, make a matrix of it right there. These are all your potassium inputs. But I'm going to stick in front of it a constant column of 1's. And that's our design matrix. Now, this is the matrix algebra that we just saw on the last slide. And it gives us the uh, beta 0 and beta 1, beta 0 being your y-intercept, and this being your uh, coefficient that you multiply potassium by. All right? So you could do it like this in R by hand, but there's the LM function, which is really quite nice in R. And what you do is you pass it y, which is your outcome, fiber, equals, and then potassium is your predictor. And you can make much more complicated models than this, but uh, for this course, we're just going to stick with a simple model. And we pass it in data equals serial. Let's go ahead and run that. And we will get for the output, we can put mod, and you can see the y-intercept right there matches the y-intercept I computed with matrix algebra, algebra, and then our beta weight matches our beta weight that we computed by hand. And you can get more output from this. So you might need an ANOVA table. So you can just wrap mod with ANOVA table. That's mod, by the way, is the output from the linear model. And this gives you things like your degrees of freedom, your F statistic, uh, your p-value for the omnibus test, whether th there's a difference overall. And then you can also, to get the beta weights out, you can run summary on mod. It gives you similar type of information, not exactly the same. Uh, this gives you the estimates, 
that's your uh, y intercept that's your coefficient the standard errors on those the t value and then um, the p value so we can see that uh, there is a significant influence from potassium in um, predicting uh, fiber output uh, we can see also in the omnibus model right here that um, this model accounts for uh, 0.82 percent of well, we'll just say 82 percent of the explained variability in fiber uh, is explained by um, the amount of potassium and we can see that it's a positive relationship because our coefficient is positive so we can interpret this as for every one unit increase in potassium we have a 0.03 uh, unit increase i guess grams is the unit um, 0.03 unit increase in uh, fiber output and oftentimes you need to get confidence intervals the broom package makes a really nice way to uh, grab this output from r and put it into a a nice nicer type format so you wrap your model with tidy and this is what it gives you gives you the, just the same exact thing we we're looking at, but it's actually in a data frame, and so you can actually uh, access those terms. You could plot it out. And if you want to add uh, confidence intervals onto it, you just uh, pipe it forward with bind calls, and then broom around the broom, uh, confident, tidy. You can see what that looks like, and we just add that to our output. And let's get a little more real estate there so we can see that all in one go. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about model evaluation. Field goes into more detail with this. So we can do something called um, broom augment the mod, and we'll see what that looks like. And you can see pretty long table, and you can see 70, uh, I believe 71 observations for the number of 77 observations. This is the number of serials, right? And you can see some things in there like uh, fiber and the potassium, the original data, that is. You can see the fitted values, uh, the standard error of the fit. Um, some of the things, though, we, we might be particularly interested in are the uh, cook and the sta studentized residuals. And we, we can use those to look for um, values that maybe are outliers or that uh, have a lot of leverage on the plot, right? So let's go ahead and add serial name back into this. See what that looks like and then let's grab you can tell from field anything where the cook is cook value is greater than one or the absolute value of the studentized residuals is greater than 1.96 let's get a little bit more real estate here and we're going to assign that to the outliers you can see that i could put the arrow at the end here i could have also put it at the beginning uh, it does the same thing And let's see what outliers looks like. I should say potential outliers. We don't know if they're necessarily outliers. And we can see, okay, it's four values that had greater than uh, one cook. And we can see, oh, this uh, all brand with extra fiber in particular. Uh, we can see that several had um, greater absolute value than 1.96 on the studentized residuals. So these could be potential outliers or uh, points that had a lot of leverage onto the plot. Okay. Now let's go ahead and plot these residuals. So we can plot what the using uh, the augment function. And we have this data set right here. We can go ahead and plot that as points. So we have the original data set of fiber and potassium. You remember what that looked like. It's actually instead of using geom point, let's use and eh, let's keep it as geom point. And can add to it. Then these are the residuals. So actually let's throw the smooth line in there as well. The blue line is what was predicted for that particular point. And then the distance between that prediction and the actual black dot, that's the residual or the error term. That's how far off the model was in predicting. So you can see up here in the upper right, there's one particular point that was really very far off. Let's figure out what those points are. Uh, to do that, I go ahead and add on there GG repel, and I take my outliers data set that I made, those four potential outliers, and I add to it a label value. And so I uh, take the outliers data set, and I take serial, and I take i. And if I didn't wasn't clear on this, uh, I added i in there, and that tells us just a row number so that we can easily access that, access that later on. And to do the row number, I just do sequence length of n. You want to see what sequence length does? Do it with a constant of nine. You can see it just makes a vector of values. So basically, these are just the rows from the original um, data set. So I know what they are. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like with the GG repel text on there. And we can see, wow, all of these have to do, it seems to be with um, fiber or bran, I guess more so. Not fiber, more so with bran. Uh, we also might want to test some assumptions. Uh, regression has four major ones, and you can remember it as line, the acronym line. You want linearity between X and Y, and we already know that there's probably some curvature to this. Um, there should be independence of the error terms, uh, normality of the normally distributed error terms. Sometimes this, people say that the data should be normally distributed, and that's not true. The assumption is uh, the error term should be normally distributed. And then uh, equal variance. And uh, in the, the materials online, I have a nice write-up, or a link to a nice blog post write-up about uh, equal variance. So let's go ahead and look at some of the regression uh, diagnostics built into R. So R has a nice little method where you take plot and wrap it around your model, which is mod, and you just run that. And you can see in the command line, it says hit enter to see the next plot. And we can see the very first plot showing up here. And here we have the error 
the residuals plotted against the fitted values. And if there is a problem, which there is here, actually what you're looking for is a, kind of a random cloud across here. And you want this uh, red line to be kind of straight across, right? If you see some curvature and going up and down, this could indicate to you that um, there's not a linear relationship between X and Y, or there's some relationship other than linear, uh, which we already kind of know about. So let's see the next plot. And here we have a QQ plot. And I also have some uh, nice materials in the course, uh, materials on Blackboard about interpreting QQ plots. Uh, what we're looking for are the uh, theoretical quantiles and the standardized residuals to line up across the, the line. And if we see some that are kind of skewing out, uh, we may have a problem. And we do, so we um, have a, a tail that kind of goes up here. This tells me that the distribution is probably uh, right skewed. Let's go to the next plot. And here we have the square root of the standardized residuals against the fitted values. And this is how we can check the assumption of equal variance. So what we want to see here again is uh, kind of uh, a straight a horizontal uh, red line here. And we want to see the points uh, spread evenly around that in a cloud. Uh, but we see it kind of dipping up. That tells us we may have some unequal variance uh, that we need to be uh, dealing with. And lastly, we have uh, leverage against standardized residuals. If we see anything outside of these red uh, areas, we may be having some value that has an extreme leverage on the plot. And we see that uh, number four, point number four, uh, may have some extreme leverage on this plot and really is pulling the line. So throughout we've been seeing 1, 4, and 71 popping up. We can go ahead and grab the serial uh, data set and we can say slice 1, 4, 71. We give it a vector and we can view those. And if we view them, we see they all seem to have to do with bran or raisin bran. So I'm saying to myself, well, maybe there's a problem with bran. So uh, let's take the serial data set and we'll filter, we'll grab, and here we're going to work with strings. We really haven't worked with strings much in this course, but we're going to use Grepl, which uh, allows us to um, search for a string or a substring within a particular variable. So the very first thing I pass to it is a regular expression of bran. So we're searching for any name, that's the second variable, any name that has bran in it, and ignore case, it could be upper or lower case. And so my hunch was, okay, bran, uh, maybe this is a group that is kind of influencing things and and we need to be concerned about that. So let's see if there's any other serials with brand in the name. And we see, oh wow, there's actually, it looks like 13 serials that have brand in the name. So probably that hunch is not so accurate. Uh, one thing I also want to note that in um, simple regression like this, the correlation, the R squared, so the correlation squared, is the same as the um, coefficient of determination, the big R squared from the linear model output. So we type in mod, uh, actually summary mod, we get the big R squared of 0.82 we have an adjusted R squared, and this is adjusted for when you uh, are putting in multiple predictors into the model. It'll never get worse, so this says, okay, you you're, should be penalized for putting in more and more uh, predictors. Uh, so let's take the correlation of from serial data set for fiber and potassium. Let's take those two variables, and let's take the correlation of that, which is 0.90, very tight correlation between those two, which we already know. And let's go ahead and square that, and what do we get? And we get 0.816. What was that summary of mod again? And we can see hey, these are exactly the same. So R squared, little r squared, that is Pearson correlation coefficient, is identical to the coefficient of determination in simple uh, linear regression. So how would we write this up? Something along the lines, for APA6 style, that is something along the lines of potassium significantly predicted fiber yield uh, with beta equal to 0.03. And then we give the T statistic on that for significance T with the degrees of freedom of 75. And we can grab that from the model right there. Equals negative 3.8. So where did I get that from? Right here. And P is less than 0.05, so 0 0.05 was our uh, agreed upon a priori um, alpha level. And we want to follow up with the beta, or the talk about the omnibus uh, model, the overall um, model significance. And we can say potassium also explained a significant proportion of variance in fiber with an R squared of 0.82. So 82% of the variance in fiber was explained by uh, this model uh, with F of degrees of freedom of 1 in 75 equal to 332.8, we grab that from here. P is less than 0.05, and we can see right there, this is a very small p-value. So a very strong uh, model. Uh, there's a strong relationship between fiber and potassium for sure. Now another nice thing about prediction, or uh, linear regression is you can predict from it, right? Which you can't necessarily from ANOVA. So let's say we had some new uh, serial data. And this, I actually just looked up on the web for these new serials. I didn't grab all the information, but I definitely grabbed um, fiber and potassium, right? Uh, for some cereals we don't really have. So Pop-Tarts, Crunch, Strawberry, Honey Bunch of Oats, Granola, and a French Toast, right? Or French Toast Crunch. So there's a pretty nice uh, package called the Prediction Package, and R has built-in ways of predicting the predict function. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily give you a nice output. So there's a prediction uh, package, and there's a prediction function in there. See right there? And the first thing you pass it is your model, and the second thing you pass it is your new data. So I'm grabbing from the new serial data set, just potassium, because I'm going to pass in what was given to the model, which is X. And it should be able to predict Y from that, right? 
which it does right here. It says the fitted value, the, the Y output. This is the um, what it predicts the uh, fiber will be. But we actually do know that from new serial. So we can compare what the model predicts with what we actually know about fiber here. So I'm going to go ahead and take new serial and select fiber. And I'm going to use bind calls to put those together. So we have the fitted, what the model says that the amount of fiber should be versus what the fiber is. Okay, so we can see this is actually a pretty good job. Uh, for instance, it says, hey, there should be 7.1 grams of fiber for this particular cereal, and there was actually 5. So it does pretty good. And you can actually compute something called the root mean squared error, and this gives you an understanding, particularly when you're comparing models, of um, how well your model is doing for um, prediction. So the way you compute that is by taking the error, which is what you said the model would predict, or what your model says the fiber should be versus what fiber actually is, and then you square those differences. You see what we have? We have the errors and we square those errors. And we're going to take a dplyr summarize, and we're going to take the mean of these squared errors, so the average of those, and then we're going to go ahead and square root that. This is the root mean squared error. And this can be a useful metric for comparing models in particular. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is uh, I haven't really spent a significant amount of time on ANOVA in this class. I've, I've spent some time on t-test, uh, just because I think for historical reasons it's, it's interesting and it's a nice simple introduction into modeling. Um, but I haven't spent a lot of time on ANOVA. Uh, because re anything you can do with re ANOVA, for the most part, you can do with regression. And regression also gives you the ability to predict as well. So, for instance, we did a t-test earlier with this small reduced data set right here, where we had um, product of the USA as domestic and foreign. And we, for those two groups, we want to see if there's a significant difference in the average new prices, right? And we did that with t-test earlier, right? And we said, hey, there's not a significant difference between uh, foreign and domestic. Um, P is approximately 0.5, so not a strong model. And we can see the means in domestic and foreign. So let's go ahead and make a regression model that uses that same exact information. We can say new price, tilde, product of the USA. And what's happening under the hood is um, R is taking this foreign and domestic and turning it into um, a dummy variable of ones and zeros. And we pass into it our data. When we make a model, we call it regmod. We can look at the summary of that. We can look at the ANOVA table of that. Particularly though I'm interested in the um, summary of that. And you can see here that the, let's go back to our t-test. We can see that the t-test had a negative 0.61762 for t-test, right? And what we know about t-test is if you take the square of those, or t-distribution, if you square it, it's a, the f distribution. So we square that and we get 0.38. And we see that that's approximately what our F statistic is here. There's probably a little bit of difference because um, the t-test here is using the Welch's two-sample t-test. So um, maybe a slight bit of difference because of that. But we see that, indeed, the t-test is equivalent to the um, uh, regression output. Some other things to note about the regression output. Uh, the t-test we saw, we had the domestic versus the foreign uh, group means. And we can get that same information from our model, the linear model. We can see, oh, the intercept is actually domestic. And if we want to figure out uh, what foreign is, we need to add to it the coefficient. So you take your um, y-intercept and you add to it your coefficient. And I've done that down here. And you will get 2.9722, which is the mean of the foreign group. Uh, earlier, I, I do want to follow up on this where I had said uh, that the under the hood, R is taking product of the USA, which is a factor of groups of domestic and foreign. And it's converting it into a dummy variable of zeros and ones. Sometimes it's called one hot encoded. So we can actually pull out of the model the design matrix. So we can take model matrix function, and we'll get the design matrix out of it. You can see here the intercept, the constants of all ones that we talked about earlier, and you can see product of the USA foreign, and zero if it's not that, which is domestic, one if it's foreign. So this uh, video has shown how to do some simple regression in R, how to look at some assumptions, how to do some plots with it, and how it's equivalent to um, uh, t-test in ANOVA. If you want more information, uh, you can look in field um, at all, 2012, and then also um, take a look at the online materials for regression as well.